Hey guys, so my name is Robert Campbell. Um, I'm a poet living in Lexington, Kentucky, and Liz invited me to make this little video, and I'm very pleased to do it. It sounds like a great class. It's a great idea uh, for a video, so hopefully I can offer you guys something useful that you can use during this class. Uh, I'm going to read a poem called Percussion in the Valley of Dry Bones, and I'll read it first, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. I'll talk about the journal. And I'll give you guys a, a prompt that you can use for your own writing. And then I suppose that's, that's pretty much it. So, all right. If I can get this open. By the way, the sound that you're hearing is a storm outside. There's like a um, thunderstorm <laughs> happening. I don't know if that's going to show up on the audio. And I checked out a webcam from the library, but it, it's, it's really not... The greatest so I'm using my phone this whole thing is like one long selfie I really hope the audio is good enough I'll listen to it first and make sure it sounds okay before I send it on anyway uh, percussion in the valley of dry bones the Lord set me in the middle of a valley it was full of bones I will open your graves and declare important things he said the Lord grabbed two hills and broke the crust of the earth I will make various pronouncements on your heads, he said. The Lord mused, rubbing the chin of his golden countenance. My people will sing unto me, and I will tap my feet in time. The Lord unpeeled some stratosphere and rolled a cigarette. Afterward, I would like a very nice reception with limoncello. The Lord passed his hand over the bones. They began to drop a syncopated beat. I will dangle the skeletons of men from strings while playing Beastie Boys songs on Kitar. The Lord breathed, and fog and strobe lights issued from each skull. I will break dance for my people. I will pop and lock with glory. The Lord gyrated on his chariot, and it did thunder and lightning. The firmament hissed with steam. My people will pay 150 bucks to see me lowered onto a stage wearing nothing but pink sequins and fingerless gloves, received into a throng of dancers. The Lord grew indecipherable. He beatboxed for 20 minutes straight, and the heavenly host did twist and shake. I will perform my final number with pyrotechnics and with smoke. The sky grew dark, a great yawning in the abyss. The skeletons hummed. The Lord flicked ash into the sea, and when I opened my mouth to speak, he stuck his lit cigarette therein. It seared my tongue. And then I returned to Jerusalem, no wiser, but blind and full of music. So this poem was published in a journal called Columbia Poetry Review. Here's, I don't know if you want to see, there's the issue. Uh, it's a great journal. Um, you know, uh, some places tend to publish only the sort of rock stars of poetry, and then other places, um, like Columbia Poetry Review, will have maybe like a couple rock stars, and then mostly poets like myself, who just have a meager body of work, they're still kind of emerging, still kind of um, building up maybe a first collection, maybe they have like just one or two books. So, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a great journal, and then the poem itself, I'll talk a little bit about, I suppose. Um, of course, the Valley of Dry Bones is a reference to Ezekiel. So there's a passage in Ezekiel that's describing this, this valley full of bones, and it's all about regeneration, and there's a lot of body-based imagery. The, the bones grow sinews, and it's, it's really cool, actually. It's, it's a really strange kind of passage. But uh, mostly, I just loved the way the phrase sounded, the Valley of Dry Bones. I just thought that sounded really cool. So the poem is a riff on the text itself. So I've taken the first line is, is actually straight from the passage in Ezekiel, and then the rest of it kind of builds. So I've taken something that's actually very serious, that the text that this comes from is very serious, and I've, I've rendered it somewhat humorous and, and absurd and kind of strange. And, and anyway, that's, that's the kind of game that I'm playing, and, and that's something that, that I enjoy in poems. I like poems that have an element of the, the surprising or, or the absurd to them. So uh, the form of the poem is in couplets, and you guys can take a look at that. I'll give Liz the, the link to the poem so that you can see it in text form. So you'll, you'll have all of that. And, you know, uh, Liz mentioned revision in, in her message to me talking about like the process of revision. and. 
you know, no, nobody sets out to write a conceit-based poem and, and succeeds the first time. Like this, this kind of poem, um, it emerged from like a free write on a riff. So I just thought the text was interesting. And I just kind of wrote riffing on this phrase and this idea. And then later I, I tailored it and, and kind of put things in order so that it really did build off that original text and kind of reflect it in an interesting way. So that's that's how I got there. It was it's not so much what you do the first time as it is what you choose to keep, what you choose to cull, and that that entire process of of you know cutting and expanding over and over again. So my prompt for you all, which I hope you will try, is to uh, attempt to write a riff, write a poem that riffs off of another text. Take something that's serious and make it somewhat less serious, make it humorous or absurd. So you could take, for instance, like a, like a news clipping or like a legal document. Um, I'm thinking of like Elizabeth Bishop has this great poem called The Man Moth that was really written after she read this news clipping where someone, um, I think it was a news clipping, that instead of mammoth, they, they typed man moth and it was a typo, but she thought it was really funny. And so there's this, this whole poem is a description of the man moth and he's like leaping around off of buildings in the night and it's pretty cool. So, so anyway, yeah, cre create a riff, take a serious text, use that as the first line and then for the rest of the poem just play with it and make it less serious. And that's my, that's my prompt for you. So I hope this was enjoyable. I hope the video quality isn't too awful. I'm, I'm really sorry if it is. I'm, I'm doing my best here. And best of luck with your class. It sounds like an amazing class. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you, you get some great poems out of it. Um, and I'll uh, see you later.